Two decades have passed since radio listeners first heard the cry of Hi-Yo Silver. Tonight's adventure is a milestone, marking the 20th anniversary of the creation of this program and the broadcasting of the 3,128th radio adventure of the Lone Ranger, a character who now ranks in fame with Robin Hood and King Arthur of the Round Table, and whose adventures have enriched the library of Americana. And now, Cheerios, the nourishing breakfast cereal made from oats and ready to eat, presents The Lone Ranger. I am still there. A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Yes, when you hear that galloping horse, it's the Lone Ranger. And when you see that delicious breakfast cereal, shaped like tiny, crisp little letter O's, it's Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One, two, let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hi! In place of the commercial announcement usually heard at this time, our sponsor, General Mills, makers of Cheerios, would like to pay special tribute to the Lone Ranger on this historic occasion of his 20th anniversary program. Thunder Martin was one of the closest friends of the Lone Ranger and Toto. He was closing the corral gate on the ranch where he worked his top hand when he saw a stranger approaching. Thunder observed that the man's clothes were too large and his face peculiarly pale. Oh, oh. Well, howdy, stranger. Howdy. Is this the Hornblow Ranch? Yep, and I'm top hand. State your business. You must be Thunder Martin. Yes, that's my name. Is it true that you're a friend of the Lone Ranger? Yep. I have an important message for the masked man. Where is he? Well, he's traveling with a young gent named Dan Reed. Just uh, leave the message with me and I'll give it to the Lone Ranger's Indian pal. He'll be here soon. No, I must see the Lone Ranger. It's a matter of life and death. His death. Well, he said something about going to a place called Bryant's Gap. Bryant's Gap? It's two, three days travel south of here. Yes, I know the place, steady fellow. <laughs> yeah. oh. Doggone. A matter of life and death. I wonder what he meant. That night found the Lone Ranger and his teenage nephew, Dan Reed, camped in mountainous country west of Bryant's Gap. After leaving Thunder Martin, they made a side trip to visit the Lone Ranger's secret silver mine. Dan met a trusted old man who lived there, working the mine and refining the ore necessary to provide silver for the Lone Ranger's bullets and his own simple needs. My brother and I discovered that mine long ago, Dan, before you were born. Well, that was before you and my dad joined the Texas Rangers, wasn't it, sir? Yes. When we joined the Rangers, we couldn't work the mine, so we kept the location a secret. Your father's share of that property is now yours, Dan. Someday, you may become very wealthy by starting large-scale operations there. Oh, I don't care about that. I just want to travel with you and Tonto. Oh, thanks, Dan. But later, I'd like to discuss that with you. How soon will we reach the place where, where Dad is buried? We'll be at Brian's Gap the day after tomorrow. Well, that's the... Yes, the anniversary of your father's death. Yes. I'll always remember that day. The things that happened completely changed my life. Your life. In fact, the lives of many people. Your father and I were in a group of six Texas Rangers who were trailing the Cavendish gang. That was a powerful gang, wasn't it? Yes, Dan. Butch Cavendish and his outlaw followers terrorized the entire Southwest. We heard that the gang was hidden in a canyon known as Bryant's Gap. 
The six of us rode into the canyon. Your father, who was in charge of our group, signaled a halt. Oh, 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 oh. Captain Reed, why are we stopping here? I've sent a guard ahead to scout the canyon so we'll not be ambushed. We'll wait for him to report. Yes, sir. The guard was not a ranger. He was a civilian. And, unknown to any of us, he was working for Cavendish. We waited only about 15 minutes. Then the guide rode up to us and reported. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Captain Reed, I've located the Cavendish gang. In the canyon? No, sir. They camped in the woods beyond the far end of the canyon. You hear that, man? Yes, sir. We'll go through the canyon on the double. Come on. Easy. Get back. Come on. Get up. Get up. Collins, the guide, had lied to us. Cavendish and his men knew that we were coming. They were waiting behind protecting rocks on both rims of the canyon. They opened fire with high-powered rifles. Our horses went down, and the six of us were trapped on the canyon floor. Three of us were wounded in the opening volley. We found meager protection behind rocks and returned the fire. We were at a tremendous disadvantage and hopelessly outnumbered. Your father and I were fighting side by side. We both had several wounds. Then your father said, This can't go on much longer. Listen to me while I'm able to talk. My wife and son are on their way from the east. If you survive, I, I know you'll take good care of them. And I knew that nothing short of a miracle would bring any of us through that fight alive. But I nodded to your father. And then he said, I'll count on you to resign from the rangers and work that silver mine we staked out. See that my son and his mother get my share of the mine and kick... Oh! Your father was struck by a fatal bullet. That's the last I remember of the fight. Tom told me how he found you in the canyon. You were the only one alive. Yes, he nursed me back to health. He buried your father and the four of the rangers... And he made a sixth mound of earth and a cross with my name on it. So the Cavendish gang would think there had been no survivors. Was it Tano's idea to wear a mask? Yes, Dan. He made my first mask out of the black cloth in my brother's vest. At first, I posed as an outlaw. That made it easier to run down the men in the Cavendish gang. How long did it take to get them off? Years, Dan. Last of all, we captured Cavendish himself. Did the law hang him in his palace? Some were hanged. Cavendish and several others went to jail for life. Since then, they've all died. Except Butch Cavendish. He's in the territorial prison. It took you a long time to find me after you'd become the Lone Ranger. Yes, Dan. A long time. How did you know I wasn't massacred by the Indians who attacked our wagon train? I didn't. But when I heard of that massacre, heard that there were no survivors, some inner sense seemed to tell me that my brother's son still lived. So I never abandoned the search for you. And I finally found you. Now we'd better turn in and get some sleep. We're breaking camp at dawn. That night, the men who had stopped to talk to Thunder Martin camped on the trail far north of Bryant's Gap. And that night, Tonto returned to the Hornblow Ranch. After turning his paint horse into the corral, the Lone Ranger's Indian friend rapped on the door of the bunkhouse where Thunder Martin lived. Oh, no. uh, how, Thunder? Well, come on in. Doggone, I'm glad to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down, Toto. I, uh, I want to tell you about a gent who came here looking for the Lone Ranger. He came here about noon. Said he had something mighty important to tell the Lone Ranger. He said it was a matter of life and death. Hmm? That plenty strange. He wouldn't tell me the message, and he didn't want to wait for you. So I told him the Lone Ranger was heading for Bryant's Gap. He knew where that is and said he'd go there. How him look? Well, he's a homely-looking galoot with small eyes that shift around while he talks. He was wearing clothes that looked like they'd been borrowed from someone bigger. Oh, oh, I wonder why him want Lone Ranger. Oh, horse just stopped outside. Yeah, come on. Well, it's Western Union. How are you, Sparks? All right. You're a long way in town. Well, it's on account of this message, Thunder. It came over the wire tonight. It might be important. Oh. It's for the Lone Ranger. Well, Tonto is a masked man's partner. 
Give him that magic. Yeah. It just tells about someone who busted out of jail. Oh, it's, say, Cavendish. Yeah, Cavendish. That butch Cavendish. Him man who was here. Me remember him. But Todd, or... You tell him where Lone Ranger go? Well, yeah. Cavendish I... go there. Him last a bad gang. And him kill Lone Ranger. Me try catch him before it's too late. It was mid-afternoon on the anniversary of the massacre in Bryant's Gap when the Lone Ranger and Ben guided their horses past high cliffs toward the canyon's entrance. The ground was littered with rocks of all sizes, some as large as a fair-sized house. When the horsemen came alongside a particularly big boulder that stood a few yards from the base of the cliff, the masked man drew rein. Stop here, Dan. Hold it. Hold it. Hold Hold Golly, this is rough country. It hasn't changed a bit since that day, years ago. And just ahead of us, there's a gap in the cliff. Is that the entrance to the canyon? Yes, then. Then why are we stopping here? Isn't that where we're going? Yes. We leave the horses here in the shade of the boulders. Easy, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Then there's the entrance to the cave. Oh. Is that where Tano brought you after he found you wounded in the canyon? Yes. That's where I first put on a mask and became the Lone Ranger. Is it... Is it far to Dad's grave? No. He's buried right at the entrance to the gap. We'll go there now. The entrance to Brian's gap was about 50 yards wide and bounded by cliffs 100 feet or more in height. Masses of rock that had been broken from the cliffs by countless years of wind and storm were piled along the sides of the canyon. Near the western side of the entrance... There was a little plot of grassland. Here, Dan Reed saw six mounds of earth, each marked by a crudely fashioned cross. Tonto and I carved the names in these crosses before we rode away from here, Dan. Oh. Now, this one on the left marks the resting place, the man who led us, Captain Reed. My dad. One of the finest, most courageous men who ever lived. You're going to be just like him. I want him to be... to be proud of me. He is... Believe me, Dan, he's proud of you. These others, Jim Bates, Sam Cooper. Jack Stacy and Joe Brent, Texas Rangers. Oh, this one, the sixth cross. My name is on it, Dan. Yes, I see. That's why Cavendish and his gang thought all of us were dead. They never knew that one Texas Ranger became the Lone Ranger. Oh, Dan, a shot! I'm here, keep down. Moving with lightning speed, the Lone Ranger grabbed Dan's arm and leaped to the shelter of nearby rocks. And the masked man was none too soon. The third shot brushed his shoulder. Keep your head down. Who's firing at us? I don't know. I didn't even see where the shots were coming from. I did. There's a man on top of the cliff on the far side. But you're hit. It's nothing, just a scratch. Gosh, he seems determined to get us. I'll return his fire. Did you get him? No. I don't expect to from here. He's in a position to fire down at us without showing much of himself. Good thing this rock is plenty high. Yes. Who do you think he is? I've no idea, Dan, but I'm going to find out. Here, take this gun. I've taught you to use it. Yes, sir. I'll leave my gun belt with you. There's plenty of ammunition. But you... I'll keep one gun. Now listen carefully, Dan. Yes, sir. Reach around the side of this rock with a gun and fire in the general direction of that opposite cliff. Now? Yes, try it. But don't expose your head or shoulder. That's the way. Now fire. Good. He fired back. That's what I want. Maintain spaced gunfire to keep his attention. I'm going to the top of that cliff. I think I can reach it without being seen. But your shoulder, you're wounded. A scratch. Keep firing. The many boulders concealed the Lone Ranger as he circled wide and reached the cliff on the far side of the canyon's mouth. The cliff was difficult to climb. The masked man was hampered by his wound, but finally he reached the top. He was a hundred yards from the edge of the canyon, a hundred yards behind the gunman. He reached for the gun he'd stuck in his belt and gasped. His gun was gone. Lost it. Stealing that wall. Though unarmed and dismayed, the Lone Ranger lost no time through indecision. He moved ahead cautiously and quickly, hoping that the unknown gunman wouldn't turn. The man was crouched behind a rock at the edge of the cliff. He fired intermittently, and Dan Reed's responses came like an echo. The Lone Ranger was within 50 yards of the attacker. The distance narrowed to 25 yards, then half of that, when the gunman paused to reload his weapon. It was then that the masked man spoke. Drop that gun. What the... Cavendish, you here? 
I want you. I'll kill you. The masked man charged, but Cavendish was ready. The two men, armed only with their fists, met face to face. Cavendish swung and missed. The Lone Ranger struck a hard blow. Cavendish snarled. I've waited years to kill you. The Lone Ranger was weak from loss of blood. His blows lacked their usual force. Cavendish, on the other hand, was tough and strong from years of hard prison labor. And he knew all the foul tricks of rough and tumble fighting. He kicked and gouged. He clawed and bit. The two became locked and went down. Put up! The Lone Ranger's head struck a rock. He was half stunned. Cavendish secured a grip on his throat. Glad my gun was empty. Rather kill you with my bare hands. Weak and only semi-conscious, the Lone Ranger's fighting heart would not admit defeat. He mustered his strength for a final mighty effort and wrenched free. He, he rolled away from Cavendish, then lay flat on his back, his head scant inches from the edge of the cliff. Cavendish leaped to his feet. I'll get you. I'll strangle the life out of you. I'll square things. The Lone Ranger saw the outlaw coming, arms extended, fingers reaching for a death grip. He thought, my last chance, my life or his. All right, Cavendish. You... No! The Lone Ranger could hardly realize that the fight had ended. He had acted instinctively to meet the attack by bending his knees to bring up his feet and by grasping the outlaw's extended hands, which were reaching for his throat. Cavendish was lifted bodily by the Lone Ranger's boots against his stomach. He somersaulted over the masked man and over the edge of the cliff into the ravine. <laughs> The Lone Ranger's strength gradually returned and his brain cleared. He made his way to the base of the cliff. He found the gun that had fallen from his belt, then hurried to the entrance of Bryant's Gap. There he saw Cavendish lying on the ground. Dan Reed and Toto were at the outlaw's side. Toto, he must happy. Me learn Cavendish come here. Me ride hard, try to catch him. Me, too late. Toto arrived while you and that man were fighting on the cliff. We saw Cavendish fall. Oh? Uh, Toto, he's still alive. Uh, but him dying. Him not live long. Hurt plenty bad. You masked troublemaker. Cavendish, can you hear me? I hear you. You made trouble for me from the start. Smashed my game. Yes. The Lone Ranger dropped to his knees beside the dying outlaw. He leaned forward so his face was close. Uh, Cavendish, I'm going to remove my mask. Don't bother. I want you to die knowing the true identity of the man who smashed your gang. Now, look at me. Do you remember me? You, breathe. No. No, you're dead. No, Cavendish, I'm not dead. I, I saw you fall. I saw your grave. You all six of the rangers. One ranger did not die, Cavendish. One ranger lived to avenge the others. Beaten by you. My whole gang smashed. By one lone Texas ranger. Yes, Cavendish. By one lone ranger. I wish I could have died not knowing it. You... <laughs> Cavendish, then... Toto, he was the last of that gang. Now we may feel free to take down the sixth cross and smooth the ground, so only five mounds of earth remain. Golly, it's like the hand of fate. What is, Dan? You, Cavendish, the long years of smashing that gang... And it all ends right here where it began. No, Dan, it doesn't end here. We'll keep riding. I'll keep my mask and continue as an unknown man. There are still many outlaws in the West. Men like Cavendish who must be brought to justice. I want to help. I've shown you that I can use a gun. May I have one of my own? Yes, Dan. But when you're a man, there'll be law and order in the West and great cities like those in the East. There will always be bad men... But they'll be different from the kind we know. To combat them, you'll need weapons and strength and courage. But these must be backed by knowledge and education to handle them intelligently. Our great country will progress only so long as there are leaders. You and young people like you must educate yourselves to be the leaders. Son, I want you to go to college to study science and law history and the problems of government. I want you to learn the many things required so you'll be ready to take your place as a good citizen 
and carry on where we leave off. I understand. Knowing that you're in school preparing for the future, I'll be content to continue helping others bring law and order to the West until you young men can take over. I'll go to school, sir. I'll study hard. In that case, Dan, I'll feel that I have fully kept the pledge I made so many years ago beside your father's grave. Pledge? To find you and prepare you for manhood. I... I hope Dad knows. I'm sure he does. Go over there, Dan. Go alone to the side of his, to the place where we left him sleeping. There you'll be close to him. I think you'll know that he and your mother are together, hand in hand, as they watch you. That they're saying, our son is good. Let us pray that he too will have a son who will carry on his name and make him proud. Look at Dan. Him kneel by grave. He's close to his father, Toto. Ah. And that where you, me, pledged friendship many years ago. This is a good time to renew that pledge. Kimasabi, long as you live, long as me live, he ride with you. Yes, Toto. I couldn't carry on without you. As long as we ride, we'll travel together. We'll return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, Turnabout. When boys line up to run a race, galloping garden sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Yes, Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor no other cereal can match. And listen... Cheerios with milk, fruit, and buttered toast gives you all the energy, all the go power you need to keep alert and at your best all morning long. You see, ready-to-eat Cheerios is made from energy-packed oats, made to give you vitamins and minerals you need for healthy nerves, good red blood, sound teeth and bones, made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios... In our next exciting adventure, murderous outlaws took possession of a covered wagon, made prisoners of the pioneers, and then, when the Lone Ranger and Toto tried to prevent their escape, prepare to kill them. Be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. (laughs) 